Paul Cézanne was born in 1839 in Aix-en-Provence, a city in the south of France surrounded by hills and the countryside. He lived through a time of extreme social and artistic change, and his art bridged this shift from tradition to modernity. The way he challenged existing ideas of beauty, colour and how to paint went on to inspire a generation of younger artists. The history of painting would never be the same again. In 1861, 22-year-old Cézanne quit law school and moved to Paris to study art. The capital was a world away from his hometown and in the middle of a turbulent transformation. There was rapidly growing industry and new social conventions for women, as well as widespread poverty, violence and discrimination. Cézanne tried to capture it all. In Paris, he met other ambitious young artists who also wanted to reflect the world they lived in through their art. Among them were Claude Monet, Pierre-Auguste Renoir and Camille Pissarro. They made portraits, landscapes and scenes both real and imaginary that alluded to what was happening in France at the time. This later became known as the Impressionist Revolution. At the start of his career, Cézanne's paints were so thick that one art critic said they could have been shot out of a pistol. He tried to set himself apart from the fashionable metropolitan artists in Paris whose paintings were championed by the prestigious Salon exhibition. He said, the others see and feel like me, but they do not dare. Me, I dare. I have the courage of my convictions. In 1870, France went to war with Prussia. Cézanne and his partner, Marie-Hortense Fiquet, fled to Lestac, a village on the coast in the south of France. They had met a year earlier in Paris and defied middle-class conventions by living together outside of marriage. Fiquet became one of Cézanne's favourite models. He rarely worked with professional life models and preferred to paint people he was close to. Their patience allowed him the time to make repeated studies, to experiment and to hone his portraiture practice. Cézanne went on to paint Fiquet nearly 30 times over 25 years, showing their continuous closeness and partnership. In the 1870s, Cézanne often worked alongside his friend and mentor Pissarro. Pissarro helped inspire Cézanne to develop his signature technique of considered, measured, parallel brushstrokes. Cézanne's colour palette also became lighter. He used a small range of colours, but in a rich variety of shades. He continued to travel back and forth between Paris and the south of France in his native Aix and Lestac. He wrote, The views are like a playing card, red roofs against the blue sea. These were the years when Cézanne became the Cézanne we now know. In the 1880s and 90s, Cézanne's favourite area of experimentation was still lifes featuring common household items, such as bowls, jugs, fruit, and a traditional blue fabric called l'Indien. At the time, still life was, at least traditionally, considered the least important of the art genres, but he wanted to show the art establishment just how meaningful these modest objects could be. With an apple, I will astonish Paris, he declared. 1899 was a defining moment in Cézanne's life. Now aged 60, he had been diagnosed with diabetes a few years earlier and was feeling increasingly frail. He decided to sell his Paris studio contents and settle at his birthplace, X. He pushed against his failing health with bursting creativity, channeling his concerns into moody, dark landscapes and ominous compositions with skulls. His technique varied from thick oils to layers of delicate, luminous watercolour washes. He continued to find new ways to paint, and for the first time in his career, he made portraits of people outside of the studio. A year after Cézanne's death in 1906, the Salon d'Automne 
held an exhibition in his memory, featuring more than 50 paintings and watercolours. His legacy kept growing and influenced the work of many artists. Today, he is considered an innovator, as well as one of the most well-known artists of the late 19th century. <laughs>